Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms on the Heritage Pride Homestead. Back with uh, video log or vlog number two of the hydroponics build. Today's video, we're going to be building our rails out of four inch Schedule 20 PVC. It's a drain waste vent PVC. It's a lot cheaper and a lot thinner than the Schedule 40 stuff. But for our application, it'll work perfectly. So why spend the money on the high pressure uh, schedule 40 stuff when we can do what we need with the schedule 20 uh, the fittings are a lot cheaper and the pipe is a lot cheaper so that's the route we're going uh, basically some of the tools that you're going to need today is going to be a drill a hole saw and it's going to depend your hole saw is going to depend upon what size net cups you're going to use so I'm using um, three inch net cups so I'm using a two and three quarter inch hole saw and a hole saw can be purchased at any hardware store or home improvement center. Um, they're a little pricey, but get a good one. Don't, don't cheap out and get something cheap that's going to booger up your PVC real bad. So this is a Linux. It's a really good product. I use them every day in construction. and uh, Well, not every day, but a lot in construction. And they're really good. Um, I actually had to go buy a two and three quarter inch one because it's not a very common size for me to carry on the truck. Uh, but now I've got one for the truck so and one to do this stuff with so got that um, You're gonna need so like I said the drill the whole saw If you have a Dremel multi-tool um, the Dremel is a great little tool to have I'm gonna be using it in this video if not you can probably achieve the same um, In the end with a hacksaw uh, and some sandpaper um, other than that, you need like a square chalk line or a long straight edge or, and some markers and stuff like that. That's about it. So uh, let's get started making our rail system. All right, guys. So step one is to cut your pipe to the length that you want it. Um, mine are 99 and a half inches, and that's just what works out for my table. Um, you know, you can do them any length you want, really. I don't see why there would be a reason... Uh, to have a limit on how long you make it as long as you have enough grade on it for the water to drain. So mine are 99 and a half, like I said, it works out for me. I've got one end cap, solid end cap piece, and I've got one um, clean out adapter and a clean out plug. So that's what I'm going to be using on mine. You have to get, um, the first thing we need to do is once you cut it, is I use just a clamp here to clamp it to the to the table so that it doesn't move around too much on me and this is where a, a straight edge would be nice but I'm using a chalk line and it's working just fine um, it doesn't like to stick to the pipe very well but it gives you something that you can see just long enough to go by so we'll go ahead and stretch this out here and I'm putting it as close to center out there as I can see it and I'm just eyeballing it and I'm going about center of the pipe here and then I'm going to pop the line and like I said it doesn't give you a really sharp contrast line like it would on wood but it works okay for this all right guys so one thing I'm doing in my rail is at the end where the drain is going to be I'm cutting out an access panel and that will just allow me to be able to see the water and see the drain and see it working and all that good stuff. Um, so I've got my clean out down here on the end. You can see it right there. And then we've got a little cut out access panel there. So I just wanted to show you that so I could show you why we were marking it on the pipe. All right, so in order to achieve our cutout down here on the end where we want it, I'm just taking our clean out adapter and sliding it on the pipe and to its max there so that we can see how far it's gonna come back. Now I've got the original cutout that I used when I cut the first one. Basically my cutout is two inches by about three inches. Um, so you can just mark that on the, on the pipe with the tape measure, but since I've already cut one, I'm just going to use this one as a template. I'm going to butt it right up against it, just like this, push down on it to flex it out, and make sure that my it's pretty centered. And then trace. that and then we're going to trace right against our clean out adapter 
and then now that's ready to cut out in a few minutes. All right, now what we want to do is mark for our net cup holes uh, down through here. And the way I'm doing that is I'm taking my first rail. I've already measured everything out in my system, so I know exactly where I want everything. But just for, an, uh, just for informational purposes, I'm putting my net cups 10 inches apart. So I know on my, I've got four rails total, so they're pairs. I've got two on one side and two on the other side. So on my first rail, I know I want to start at six inches off the end. And then I'm going to mark every 10 inches. All right, now that we've got it all marked out, it's time to drill the holes. And to drill the holes, like I said, I'm just using a drill and a hole saw, a Linux hole saw. Now the trick to this, to keep from boogering up your PVC and jerking it around and all that other stuff, is this PVC is really thin and pretty much typically anytime we drill <clears throat> for like um, through fiberglass showers or anything plastic, we always run it in reverse. We'll run it in forward just to get our pilot hole started with the pilot bit and then we'll turn it to reverse and run it in reverse and that'll basically just burn through the pipe. Now it, it will cut it but it, it burns as well and so it doesn't make near as much mess and it won't bind and break your pipe. All right, now we've got all of our holes drilled. This is where the Dremel comes in. I've attached a little sander drum on my Dremel, and I'm just gonna go around with the sander drum and clean up all of these little burrs and stuff. All right, so I've changed out the sander drum to a uh, plastic cutting wheel on my Dremel. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out our access or our viewing port down here on this end. Now a quick rinse with the water hose and it'll get all the PVC uh, shavings and dust from cutting and all that out and then we can put our fittings on. Alright guys, so this is the second rail uh, in our pair. Now in the first rail we put our first mark at 6 inches and in our second rail for the pair we want our net cups to offset each other. So if you have a net cup here and a net cup here, we want our net cup to kind of be somewhere in the center. So net cup here, net cup here, and this one we want the net cup about right there. We want it in the center. Well for my measurements, that equals out to be 11 inches. So I'm going to take and make my first mark at 11 inches. And then I'm going to go 10 inches just like I did in the first one. Alright guys, so it's getting dark on us real quick and I'm going to try to go ahead and get this vlog finished up. Um, next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and glue my pieces on. Now, um, I've heard a lot of controversy, or read and watched a lot of controversy over using glue on your plumbing for your hydroponics, aquaponics, so on and so forth. And basically I've come to this conclusion. And you guys can do it however you want to do it. You don't, you don't, I mean, a lot of people just dry fit stuff. Um, 
And another idea that I like that I don't like dry fitting because I can't stand a leak. Um, we're using all rainwater for our stuff. I can't be, I mean, we're gonna have to contend with evaporation anyway. Um, so I can't be contending with uh, leaks. And dry fitting, a lot of times, you will have leaks. Um, another option that I've saw that works pretty good, but it's still a dry fitting, is to use a stainless steel screw. Drill you a little pilot hole and put you a stainless steel screw in it. That way you can still take it off. I like that idea for a lot of stuff, uh, but for this, it's not going to work. So the reason why there's controversy over glue uh, is because of toxicity levels in your uh, plants and fish tanks and things like that. Um, I have been doing PVC plumbing since I was probably eight or nine years old, and I have plumbed many a houses and done many a repairs with PVC pipe using PVC glue. Now, uh, that same glue that's used to plumb your house feeds your house with water and you and your human friends and children drink that water and you're not dead yet. And also, um, for those of you that have farms that uh, feed your plants and uh, animals from your uh, home plumbing, guess what? That same, that passes through that same pipe that's used with the same glue and the same PVC pipe and your plants do just fine. So uh, it really doesn't make any sense to me why people make such a big deal out of using glue on your fittings for your plumbing system. Just let it dry real good. That's all you have to do, in my opinion. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this one mounted up with the other one. This is our second to the pair. I'm gonna mount it up on the rail uh, just temporarily so that you can see what it will look like. All right guys, so hopefully you can see it okay. Uh, still got a little bit of sun in here, but not much. So um, on the camera it looks okay, but on when I put it on the computer it might be a little bit dark. So this is what our system will look like. You'll have one pair of rails back here and you can see now with our measurements how the neck cups are offset. So each rail has nine holes in it, and so that gives us 18 uh, net cups per pair of rails. And then you see our cutouts down here. Now in the future, we will have a drain line that runs across here and then feeds back over here to the pond. And we will be drilling some holes and putting our little stand pipes in here um, so that we can adjust how much water we want to stay in the bottom. Now in a dripper system that's not really necessary but if we ever want to convert it over to NFT we will need that to adjust how much water we want to flow in the bottom of our uh, rail system. Uh, in early stages you want your water level to be a little bit higher so that the roots can grow to the water and then as the roots get longer you can drop your standpipe down so that there's less water and nutrients that flow and touch the bottom of the roots. And then of course down here we have our clean out. So if we get gummy uh, or whatever, we can open that up and we can take a water hose, put it in the first hole up there and shoot some good high pressure water down through here and rinse it out. So that's why we put the clean outs on here. So that'll help with that. Um, and then you can see now what it looks like with the uh, unistrut and the unistraps uh, holding everything into place. I've just got these hand tight and they're pretty stout so that's one pair and then we'll have another pair on the front here in a system like this you could probably fit my bench is 30 inches wide and uh, just over eight feet long well my rails are 99 and a half inches um, so that's just over eight feet about uh, 96 inches would be eight feet so our tables probably actually about nine feet long and 30 inches wide um, but as far as grow space goes, we've got two and a half feet by 8.3 feet or something like that. So you're looking at about 21.75 square feet, maybe 22 square feet. Um, and that will give us 36 plants. When we get all four pipes on here, it'll give us 36 plants in a 22 square foot growing space. That's pretty awesome. Um, but like I said, you could put a fifth rail in here if you wanted to. Um, if we ever switch over to NFT and do away with our drippers, then we could really create another rail to go right down the center here 
and uh, cover up our board here for our plumbing. You, that wouldn't really be necessary uh, if we was running NFT and not a dripper system. So we could actually add a fifth rail to it if we wanted to. That's another awesome thing about using the Unistrut. Um, you can move these around, adjust fire. If you cut, if you take two by sixes or two by fours and turn them up on end and cut your little half moons out in it, then you're, you're stuck with that. So with the Unistrut, it's really cool. You can uh, adjust fire however you want to. And like I said in the Unistrut in the last vlog, um, when we was going over the table, the Unistrut is, uh, you can get that at any local hardware store, home improvement warehouse, anything like that. It's in the electrical department. Uh, in my field, we use this to strap uh, conduit to ceilings or plumbing or anything for that matter. It works really awesome. Lighting, uh, just all kinds of cool stuff. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for this vlog. Uh, just going over how to make your hydroponic rails uh, for your rail system. Now in the next video, the next vlog, we'll be talking about our plumbing. And that includes our drain, um, our sump tank. Actually, the sump tank we might do in another video. Um, but it includes our drains. We'll actually be cutting the holes in the drains for the um, uh, rails. We'll put those in using uniseals and stuff like that. And so we'll tie all that together. We'll put in our water supply um, line with our dripper manifolds and all that good stuff in the next vlog. So that's it for this video. Until next time, guys, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe. Most importantly, have fun. Uh, don't forget to rate and subscribe and check out the other related videos or the other vlogs in this playlist. I think it's on this side of the screen, but I may be wrong. It may be over here on this side of the screen. Everything's mirrored, and I don't, under, I don't know why. Anyway. Oh, my God.